another episode of the Tales for the Furlearned Dopes. Uh, year in review, I guess. So, I am your host, Cyber Smiley. I am your co-host, Wisdom. Greetings, programs. We are happy to be here tonight. And like my man Smiley said, uh, we are doing a year in review. And we'll probably top that off with a uh, review of Phantom Liberty and the newest DLC or uh, update. Um, yeah, I think that's probably going to be a lot of our talking point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we'll uh, it was a pretty good year. It was. Um, Fantastic year. Some good things happened. Yeah, we got a, a Artel Saurian put out three books. Uh, plus a ton of DLC, and that's just for the Cyberpunk line. Um, yeah, so let's... Cyberpunk Red dropped. Yep, Cyberpunk Red dropped. Or, uh, Combat, Cyberpunk Zone. Combat Zone dropped. Uh, a bunch of stuff for... New uh, novel. Cyberpunk 2077, yep. New novel, new uh, Dark Horse comic series. Um, announcement yeah. of a, a live action, as well as the uh, expansion... Uh, Phantom Liberty. Um, Indeed. Yeah, so we'll kind of get into it. Um, so, for our show, we were blessed to have quite a few interviews, of which... Oh, we, man, we have to get interviews this year. Yeah, we, we interviewed uh, Ross Spike Wynn twice this year, um, talking about, you know, his experience um, writing for... Artel Sorian, also getting some uh, background information about like how everything like panned out, and also beautiful dis discussions about you know just gaming in general. I think with all of these guys, um, yeah, because I mean at the heart we're all gamers. Yep. Uh, they just Benjo we're lucky enough, or we're lucky and uh, talented enough to work for the big leagues. Yep. Um, Benjamin Wright. Um, he was fantastic to talk to. Um, not saying that Ross wasn't fantastic to. I mean, we had him on twice, yeah. but okay. Benjamin. Every had... everybody we've talked to has just been phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, Benjamin was great. Um, he, I've been a huge fan of his for a long time. I mean, we we've been fans of all these guys for a long time. So I'm not I'm not yeah. gonna single anyone out as being you know more excited to talk uh, than anyone else. But uh, I mean, yeah. Ross, we had Benjamin, we had Will Moss, Will Moss, uh, who apparently is a hard guy to uh, get an interview with. Like uh, several of the people we talked to are like, "Wow, you got Will?" Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, we did. Um, we talked to. We James. got a couple of the artists. Yep. Go uh, ahead. Um, I was about to say. Oh yeah, James Hutt. James Hutt twice and. Uh, uh, Rob Barefoot, also aka Dice R T T R P G, um, who is also part of the current. Uh, yeah, Artel we got Saurian to talk lineup. to him before it, he got hired by Artel Sorian, or at least before it was announced. Yeah, um, he's so that was a beautiful guy. little bit of stuff. We got in on the ground floor of that one. Um, um, two artists, Chris Hawkabout and uh, Mike Jackson. Yeah, yeah, uh, fantastic. Uh, they're they're two of my favorite artists to work for our Talsorian. Um and in fact, Benjamin writes the other one. So there, yes. there we go. Three of my my three favorite artists. Uh, we're still looking to get Doug Anderson, but uh, well, we also need uh, Dave okay. Ackerman, who is also listed as an artist, wasn't he? Isn't he on some of the yeah, ones? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dave Ackerman is in the pipeline. We've been talking to him for a while now about getting on the show. Um, Derek Quintan. We uh, interviewed Derek Quintanar. Uh, we interviewed uh, the host of Cyber Nation Uncensored, Rob Mulligan, last episode. Uh, two episodes ago. Last was episode. Two ago? Yeah, last episode was Ed Baum. Baume, sorry. Oh yeah, the big one, Ed Baum. Um, Bome. Bome. Yeah, we got corrected on that. Sorry. Uh, you you pronounce something one way for 20 years and then you get corrected. It still takes a minute. Yeah, just, just um, learning about yeah, Ed Rage Bolme. Barmos from him was, was fantastic. Oh, dude. I mean, 
So far, we've had the creators of Raish Bartmos, uh, Adam Smasher, um, and many others. I mean, <laughs> Arasaka, like uh, the whole thing. Uh, it is. It has been a fantastic year of talking to these people and and finding out, you know, the behind the scenes lore of what it was like working for our Talsorian and coming up with these ideas and who came up with what and where and like how it all came to be. Like th- yeah. these are the puzzles that have been sitting in the back of our heads since we started playing this game in the 90s. Uh, and it's it's been awesome to finally get these answers to these questions. Yeah, one thing I forgot. Uh, um, I think to top off this year, uh, and I think you suggested it right before, is we never did our interview questions to each other, right? It's the truth. It's the truth. We've we've asked every guest we've had, but we've never asked each other these questions. And I've added a few for next year, um, and oh, also oh. new options. So. Let's see how it goes. Uh, I'll I'll go first. (laughs) Um, 2013, 2020, 2045, or 2077? Well, you know for me it's 2020. All right. Should I give the answer to you now or? You know what? Uh, Go ahead and ask me and then I'll ask you. All right. Like, just run through the thing and then we'll turn around and run it back. Sure. Favorite cyberpunk role? Uh, Nomad. Without a doubt. Favorite piece of cyberware? Uh, I, I, I've mentioned it before, but I think my single favorite piece of cyberware is the thumb lighter. I just, <laughs> I just think that's fucking awesome. Um, favorite cyberpunk weapon? The, uh, the crusher the militech crusher which is directly based off the uh poseidon nornco gong from appleseed the like 12 gauge pistol shotgun blah blam i think in the i think in cyberpunk it's 20 gauge but i don't care it's it's the coolest gun in the game favorite cyberpunk red or 2020 book um night city Least favorite Cyberpunk Red or 2020 book? Least favorite. All right, well, I'm not going to go into any of the Atlas <laughs> or Ionis game stuff. Cause, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Because um, there's a few in there that you could definitely pull from. <laughs> if I really had to choose something, um, it would probably be the original Euro Source. Just just cause but that just cause <clears throat> like it, it's it's the one i use the absolute least All right uh one euro source plus completely replace it and two it just i haven't had many games I, before euro source plus uh came out i didn't have any i never really ran anything in europe so i just never had any use for it all right um pan am judy rogue or alex Ooh, uh, I actually liked Alex quite a bit, but I'm gonna have to go with Pan Am because Pan Am is ride or die. Yeah, that chick follows you into the gates of hell and back. So she's my girl, Lucy Plus Rebecca. No <laughs> Lucy Rebecca and Kiwi. I know, I know you have a bias there. Um, let's see. Uh, you know, I really liked Kiwi. I really wanted to see more of her, and I, I felt the anime lacked that we didn't get more of her. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Kiwi. Okay. Carrie, River, Goru, or Reed? Uh, I mean, Reed is an awesome fucking character. Like, we're going to talk more about him later. Um, But, I mean, my man Takamura is just... Like Goro Takamura is is the shit. Like he's the dude you want having your back. You can't trust Reed. David Bain or Pillar? Uh, Maine. I like Pilar, 
I, I, you know, I'll be honest. I don't actually like David all that much. I think he's kind of whiny. Um, well, he's a teenager. I of course. think a lot of it. Sure. Uh, I think I think the game, the anime, centering around a teenager in the cyberpunk world is kind of fucked up. But I guess on cyber generation and cyberpunk. But yeah, Maine's the man. All right. Um, da, 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 songbird or reed. Uh, Jesus. I I, uh, I I played through, and for different characters, they had different loyalties. Uh, but I think with my main character, I'm going to go with his choice, and he, he chose to go with Reed. All right. But it was still a hard fucking choice. This is a, a long one. So, the devil, the sun, the star, temperance, the tower, the reaper. Um, and if you need me to tell you wow. what which one was which. <laughs> for me, it's the nomad ending, no matter what. Uh, well, for my main character. For my main character, it's the nomad ending. For uh, my ninja character, it's the ending where he uh, comes back and then goes to Crystal Palace. And for the Netrunner, I think she's going to let Johnny take over her body. Okay, but this is a question for you. Okay. My main, my my favorite is absolutely the Nomad ending. Okay, I think it's so that's it's it's <clears throat> yeah. For me, if I had to choose a canon ending, it would be that. One. For those keeping score, that is the star. Um, favorite Night City gang. Maelstrom. Favorite mega corporation. Arasaka. Favorite cyberpunk movie. Uh, I'm not going to say Blade Runner, even though it's probably my favorite. It's one of my two favorite movies of all time. Uh, instead, I'm going to say Nemesis. Favorite cyberpunk fictional character? Favorite cyberpunk fictional character? Uh, Dune and Nuke from Appleseed. Nice. Um, Dick, Gibson, Stevenson, or Sterling? Dick. Uh, uh, favorite cyberpunk novel? Scanner Darkly. <clears throat> and finally, is cyberpunk, or sorry, is Shadowrun cyberpunk? Uh, it's cyberpunk adjacent, which I have stated many times. There are cyberpunk elements to it, but at its heart, it is fantasy. All right, those are the, uh, the questions. We got. I got to work on getting a twentieth one to just to round it out, just because my OCD. Because currently it's at eight, nineteen, so <laughs> I got to. Yeah, one uh, more. I mean the novel thing. Honestly, uh, if I if I had to be truly honest, if we if we can include graphic novels in that, then it's transmetropolitan by a large margin. Um, well, that's, so maybe that's we got a question that, that we can add. Favorite comic yeah. book uh, graphic novel. Yeah, absolutely. Favorite comic book. There we go. There you go. Um, all right. Uh, well, your turn. Uh, 2013, 2020, 2045, or 2077? I'm not going to insult you by asking if you like 2030X. <laughs> uh, it's got to be 2077. Just because okay. they they took the all the previous years and turned it into a three D visual experience with a lot of the that oomph that that really should be yeah there. no it is one hundred percent an extravaganza of cyberpunk goodness. All right. What's your favorite cyberpunk role? Um, I like playing a fixer. Just because... You know, if I had to go for a second one, that would probably be my choice as well. Uh -huh. Just because... But go ahead. Just, they, because. just because they have... Uh, you can have a lot of depth with them. It's very true. 
Uh, what's your favorite piece of cyberware? That's a tough one, but it truly is. That's why I go with thumb every <laughs> time. My favorite piece of cyberware that I usually love to have on people is uh, a gang jazzler. Mm, that's good. What is your favorite cyberpunk weapon? Volt pistol. The what? The volt pistol. Oh, the volt pistol. I don't. I don't <laughs> think I've ever heard anybody. I. Like ever met anybody who actually used it. Ignore armor. <laughs> Boom. Done. Yeah, no, it's an <laughs> awesome weapon, but everybody overlooks it because it's electrical. <laughs> yeah, it's electrical and it can short out your cyberware. I mean not as it's not it's, as great as a microwave, but who cares? Yeah, no, you're preaching to the choir. Like uh that is a good fucking solid choice. Um damn, Will. <laughs> uh what is your favorite Cyberpunk Red or twenty twenty book? It's gonna be Wild Side. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. What is your least favorite Cyberpunk Red or 2020 book? I'm going to piss off all of uh, the people across the pond, and it's going to be Rough Guide to the UK. That is one book I have really? never really used at all. Yeah. Huh. I mean, it... it <sighs> Tonally, it's kind of kind of weird for what's going on with with 2020 but uh there were things out of it i liked but i can it's a valid choice um shit i mean i chose Eurosource because yep. for much the same reason um all right pan am pan am judy rogue or alex mm, i like judy <laughs> i mean there's yeah I've met people like Pan Am. Uh, I've known girls like Pan Am, and those are girls I do not want to hang out with for too long. <laughs> um, I'm actually married Lucy, to one. Rebecca <laughs> or Kiwi? You're married to a Pan Am? Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. Um, I love my wife, but, you know. I, I mean, will, she's right or die. Yeah, she is. She is, but she also has a, a craziness to her that, you know, you, you, some nights you wonder if you're going to okay. get, get stabbed every, in the middle of the night, <laughs> which is exciting. Every time you're worried about that, every time you get you feel anxious, just go, just tell her to go walk, uh, work on the car and then stand behind her. Yep. Um, I like Rebecca just because she's she'd be fun to hang out with. <laughs> You would not be bored. I mean, you just talked about how you don't want to hang out with the crazy chicks. And then you pick the craziest chick of all. Like, she is she is Harley Quinn in, in leg warmers. I will not date her. I will hang out with her. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I would <laughs> hang out with Rebecca. Jesus. That chick, that, that chick will get you in trouble. Um, all right. Uh... Carrie, River, Goro, or Reed? Uh, Carrie, because I think he's the most honest. You know, I, I can believe that. I, you know, Carrie's... He's definitely a narcissist. Yep. You know uh, what you get with him. But... <laughs> yeah, but he's never dishonest about it. Like he is absolutely upfront and all he wants to do is party and let his emotions drag him around by the nose. Yeah. Um so yeah, I'm valid. Uh David Maine or Pilar? I like you, Maine. I mean he's just so very cool. Yeah. He's definitely one uh, person Songbird. You call up and you need to dispose of a body, he'll he'll be there with a shovel. Yeah, like he's dependable, <laughs> like he's cyber psycho, but anytime he's not actively spazzing out, like he's your boy. Right. Uh, Songbird or Reed? I'm going to go with Songbird. Just because... Really? Yeah, because right. Reed is an inst part of the institution. and they kinda, He is the man. He is the man. I mean, yes, there's points that Songbird kind of fucks you over, but... You know, every interaction <laughs> you have with her. Yeah, <laughs> she's um, she's like V. I I, I want to survive. <laughs> uh, 
And her body count is only slightly, slightly less than V's. Mm, slightly. I'll change Slightly, that. I mean. <laughs> she, uh, she does kill like an entire stadium of people, so. Uh, all right, favorite night... Oh, uh, the devil, the sun, the star, temperance, the tower, or the reaper? <clears throat> like you, it's going to be the star. Um, getting out of... Just, just because it's the best ending on all. Um, yeah, like... Yeah, the tower... You're not getting used... reprieved. You're not, you're not cured, but at least you're living life on your own terms with that one. Right, and, and you don't know what's going to come, right? Because there's always a sequel. Yeah. Whereas the tower... The tower is a good ending. Um, you survive, and you, you have the chance um, to continue living. And granted, you're not going yeah. to be a bored out person, but you can definitely become a, a shifty fixer. But yeah, the star, just because it yeah. seemed like the best ending for all of your characters. Um, except maybe when it comes to Carrie. But then again, Carrie was always going to has his own thing. So I don't think there's any good, good relationship with Carrie at the end. No, Carrie is not any kind of... If you go into... Anything with Carrie thinking is going to be long term, yeah. you, you are fundamentally misunderstanding his character. Yeah. I think there's a reason he's living in a mansion by himself. Um, favorite Night City gang? <sighs> I kind of like um, the Voodoo Boys, but to be honest, I think it, the Brainiacs. I mean, it's kind of weird that they turned the Voodoo Boys into the Brainiacs. Yeah, like that was that was definitely a a, a tonal shift between the twenty twenty source books and the video game. I was not expecting. Um, granted, it kind of mirrors what's going on slightly in my own campaign, where uh, the Voodoo Boys are all about like influence peddling, mm -hmm. uh, and net running is a big part of that. But for them to just go completely into Brainiac's territory, I was not expecting that. Yeah, well, I I, I thought it was a, an interesting concept of taking Voodoo, right, and the Lowell... <coughs> um, yeah, applying it to the... And applying that, like, oh, I'm going to get <laughs> ridden by the spirits and contacting the spirits and, and taking that mysticism and bringing it into a technology of that now the, the spirits are the AIs, right? Um, and yeah. that kind of mystical belief um, and transforming. Because, you know, the Voodoo Boys in 2020 are just a bunch of drug peddling, you know, psychopaths. Yeah, in, in, in the actual Night City book, they're really not even that influential of a gang. They just hang around the college and sell drugs to the students. Yep. That's, that's their big thing. Uh, they just had such a cool look and uh, story that I think we all, any any GM who used them, made them a bigger deal than they were originally presented. Yep. Um, it didn't hurt that Predator 2 came out <laughs> right about the same time, so we all had King William. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, favorite mega corporation. Uh, that is probably going to be EBM. Just okay. because they are, they are the corporation. I know people say, well, Arasaka is the biggest corporation. It's like, no, not according to lore. EBM dwarfs everybody. Yeah. Arasaka is the loudest corporation. That's what they are. EBM, they just make their money. Yeah. Uh, they, they, yeah. Uh, favorite cyberpunk movie? Like you, Nemesis. Always. There we go. Always rewatch that movie. Yeah, anytime. Like, at the drop of a hat. It's, it's so fun. Um, favorite cyberpunk fictional character? Molly Millions. Solid. Uh, favorite, uh, Dick Gibson's Stevenson or Sterling? Uh, I'm going to have to say Gibson. 
just because of uh, how he fiber. does it. Go ahead. Just because of how he, how the future he he uh, he uh, explores. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, favorite cyberpunk novel? Count Zero. Again, solid choice. Favorite cyberpunk comic or graphic novel? Yeah, let me just put that in. Um, hard decision. Um, just because I haven't gotten too many graphic novels. Um, I did like Ronan from uh, Frank Miller. Yeah, he's doing a he's doing a sequel to that right now. I think they're up to issue three, maybe four. Yeah, uh, I've read up to issue three, but um, and it's yeah. Uh, and lastly, is Shadowrun Cyberpunk? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Serving yeah, fantasy. I need that answer. <laughs> Serving fantasy, sure, but it ain't cyberpunk. <laughs> All right. Well, now that we have finally uh, been subjected to the same torturous questions that we've asked all of our guests, uh, let's move on to our, uh, get in depth into our year in review. Yep. Uh, so the three books that our Talsorian has put out this year were Danger Gal, uh, the Danger Gal dossier, which was the most recent. Um, and then before that, there was Interface Red, and then the first book they put out this year was The Long-Awaited Black Chrome. Yeah, so um, all of them had presented some pretty great stuff. Uh, I would have liked to have seen some more discussion on the various organizations uh, within Danger Girl dossier because I watched another review of it um, by another YouTuber called Mr. Welsh um, and he brought up some interesting points around Danger Gal which was basically it seemed like it was a promotional for cyberpunk or, or combat zone um, which kind of yeah, tainted my view of the book afterwards I'm like yeah it kind of is isn't it I mean even when we reviewed it, that's what I was saying, is yeah. uh, all these, all the art is, like, directly taken from, I don't know if it's the concept art for the miniatures or art made after, based on the miniatures, but yeah, it's all, it's all there. Like, all the art is the miniatures for Combat Zone. Yep. Um, which is kind of neat in and of itself, but yeah, it does, it once you've gotten a hold of Combat Zone and you look at Danger Gal, it definitely uh, it reads like an expansion for it. Yeah, if that makes any sense to the to the listeners. Yeah, and like, I, it's a good book on its own, but it definitely uh, it definitely is very closely tied to Combat Zone in 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 terms of theme and application. Yep. And out of the three, um, you know, Black Chrome was definitely a good one. I like Interface 2 just because they compile all the DLCs from the previous year and add in a new article. And the introduction of, of uh, exotics is, is a fun, right? Yeah. Because it's, it's p pulling us old school people. Be like, yay, he got all exotics. And the... Uh, <laughs> old stuff into the into the red and just seeing that transition is always yeah a, a fun i thing. mean as, as much of the 2020 material as they can pull into the <clears throat> into the present uh setting i the better like uh like you said the exotics uh a lot of the cybernetics going on with black chrome uh are straight um Straight translations from 2020. Uh, and anytime I see that, yeah, my my heart goes pitter patter a little bit because, you know, it's, in my heart, that's what I want is just more 2020. That's always going to be what I want. <laughs> um, for DLCs, so the DLCs that came out this year were uh, Hornets Pharmacy in January, 
Listen up uh, to John John the Wise in March. Stickball, dreaded uh, punk knot in June. Uh, corporate Conep and Studio Apartments. Uh, listen up to Rob Mulligan back in September. Um, Halloween Scream Sheets in October. And Night Market Index uh, in November. I don't know what they're going to do for uh, Gunsmith, Xmas, Cyber Mass. I don't know what, the, what they're planning on for, for uh, Year's End. Uh, DLC. Yeah, they've been but... tight-lipped about it so far, but I mean, it'll it'll come and it'll be cool. It was last year. Yep. Um, I did like I both I think, of the uh... listen-ups um, for both John John and, and Rob. They brought a lot of great advice for GMs. I agree. I agree. Uh, both of those guys uh, are very good GMs, and they getting getting their input. And their uh, their thoughts on running a game um, is really useful to anybody who's running a game. Um, I know that when Rob was on our show, we talked a lot about that and uh, yep. and about um, you know what advice we could give to the next generation or even the current generation. Yes. Um, although, if I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I the I, the night market index was really cool. Uh, but I really liked the punk knot DLC. I, I gotta say, I love that shit. Yeah, because that's the one thing that I think was missing from 2020 was how to build a punk knot. <laughs> yeah, like, they hey, just presented just... <laughs> it as a finished vehicle, and like, oh well, it's got to have AV engines. You can't just build your own. Like, no, it doesn't have to have AV engines. It just has to be a giant fucking assault vehicle that's been hand-built. Like, use a school bus. Yeah. Um, and even in, in Maximum Metal, they don't really give rules on how to build a punk knot, which I would no. have loved to have. Yeah, no, it's it's one of those... It became one of those abstract things where you just kind of have to really pester your GM until he lets you build um, until he lets you get away with it. And he immediately regrets it because now you've got a punk knot. <laughs> exactly. Um, so moving along, the other thing that came out was the Combat Zone, um, which is a cyberpunk red uh, skirmish war game. Um, I play tested it over at, at during Gen Con. Uh, I was also part of the Kickstarter because I just love the miniatures and like Spent more money than I probably should. Yep, have. Same here. Um, oh man, I spent way more money on that than I should have. I know that for a fact, Lord. Uh, and uh, I remember every time we had an episode, we talked about the uh, status of, of when it was going to come out. Yeah. The other thing that I'm still waiting on is um, cool minis. That board not, game. Yeah, cool minis are not a board game, which is still. Dragging along, <laughs> I think it's been two, three years. Yeah, uh, are you even started. getting regular updates on that? I couldn't afford it, so I haven't had an update in a couple of months. Um, last I heard, they were doing final uh, approval of the graphics for the supplement and some uh, approvals on the uh, some of the miniatures. Because mm. I, I went full in on that whole game. So. Yeah, I mean, it looks gorgeous. Um, I, I very much hope that it does come out. Because uh, I'd like to get a retail copy at least. Yes. Let's see if I can dig up an email from the last email I got. That's not a good sign. One of these days, one of these episodes when we come back we need to do a uh, an actual review for combat zone um but as we've stated many times the miniatures for it are absolutely gorgeous yeah uh so back in october i can give you guys kind of an update um they hope we're well uh let me see today's update 
we've got more mass production copies, including the most important one, the core box. So they, they showed off, I guess, the sample of what it's going to look like. Um, really cool. <coughs> Minis all look great. Um, and they also have some of the uh, additional box. So, of course, the, the vehicles are small, but, you know, it is what it is because it's a board game. So I have a feeling that they're going to be starting to ship probably early next year. I'm hoping. <laughs> Cross fingers. Oh, well, excellent. Um, the sooner they ship to their Kickstarter subscribers, the sooner it might be on the shelves. So yes. looking forward to that. <clears throat> So we got that look for, to look forward to. Um, but yeah, so Combat Zone, I, I, I like the mechanics. I just need to find people to play with me. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's a miniatures def- game, so it, 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 it takes space and it takes, you know, for it to be fun, it takes a couple of people. Yeah, it, it goes quick, right, um, the combat. So it's probably an hour, two hours max for a game. Uh, it's just, you know, a squeeze, squeezing into the whole thing and, and and getting people to play. Yeah. So that happened well, this year. So that's great. I got a ton of gray that I need to slay with uh, painting. Hopefully I, I will get off my arse and get to it. Um, before we get into cer- the stuff with Cyberpunk 2077 uh, from a sh- cyberpunk genre, um, movie oh, wise. We, we forgot to mention uh, that the 2077 novel yep. and a new comic series uh, debuted this year. Yes. Uh, XOXO, which is all about Maelstrom. Yep. And the comic, or the, the novel came out in August, and the comic came out last month or two months ago in october the second issue came out in november hopefully we'll get the third issue um because as you well know dark horse apparently does uh, a four issue kind of uh thread with the cyberpunk comics i would love to have seen (laughs) more of the the various stories continued however uh, they're pretty final (laughs) Um, hopefully they continue to at least give us more mini series. Uh, yeah. cause I mean, they've done a, they've done just a fantastic job. They've all been good comics, solid read, good art. Uh, the art varies from comic to comic as comics are wont to do, but it's all been solid. It's all been more than acceptable. Yep. Um, yeah, so hopefully we get more of that uh, in this coming year. Yeah, so um, I read No Coincidence. Uh, I thought it was definitely a great book uh, compared to the 2020 books, which, you know. Well, that's a pretty low bar. Yeah. Uh, I believe during Gen Con, they said that those were not canon. <laughs> so. I mean. Why would they be nothing in the Oh, one day we got to get Seth back on to see why he defends the book so much. But Well, he didn't love the um, book so much. Just keep in mind, he, he rated it a two out of five, which I, I'm surprised, <laughs> especially for an author. <laughs> yes, that's much higher than I would have ever imagined. Yeah. Um, the other things with the cyberpunk genre... Uh, a few of the movies came out. Um, we had uh, the ty- well, I don't know if it's technically cyberpunk. It was definitely um, I thought it was going to be cyberpunkish, but it was uh, yeah, it is kind of near future, crazy experimentation. They ty- they cloned Tyrone. They, um, I loved they cloned Tyrone. I I mean, it doesn't feel necessarily cyberpunk until you start getting into it. Yeah, but yeah, it's full of biotech and all sorts of weirdness going on. Um, it's kind of like an urban version of Dark City in that you don't know exactly what's going on until it, it's 
basically slaps you in the face. Yep. Uh, it's it's a good movie and it's fun. Yeah, there's also Young E, which was a Korean movie. Kind of cyberpunk. Uh, it was very bordered on sci-fi. Um, but it didn't include aliens or special powers or any of that. So I kind of consider it cyberpunk because it's not too distant future, probably in a couple hundred years, where it's AI I mean, versus I think humans. I it's cyberpunk. Um, yeah. It's it, it's a very contained story. Like there's action, but it's it's kind of like Matrix action, where it's not it, it's happening in a simulation until the end. Um, but yeah, no, I consider it solidly cyberpunk. Like, yep. Um, another movie. Uh, I, I want to say it was made by Disney, but it was called uh, Crater. Um, it's kind of like a, not necessarily a coming of age, but it was, uh, the, all the characters are like, you know, tweens, kids who live on, uh, on the moon, right. In a, in a colony and they go off and, and have like a, a day, which I found that it's definitely near future, right. It's, you know. The colony is just it's being like a, set up. Um, it's like a cyberpunk rumspringer. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's definitely an inspiration for if if you're doing any high rider campaigns uh, to kind of reference. There was also Simulant, which is I didn't watch it, but it's basically about androids and. Um, if I, want, if I remember correctly, the android kind of gets c- corrupted and becomes sentient. Um, so I, I still need to go and watch that. And then you have uh, Creator, which recently came out. Hasn't come to any of the streaming services, so neither me nor Derek have watched it. But it looks phenomenal. Um, which is basically uh, AIs versus humanity. Um, um, you might have just confused some people because uh, the cyberpunk Rumspringa, you you said that was the creator. Did I? Yeah, that was Crater, not Creator. Crater, Crater. Oh, okay. <laughs> As in, like a um, asteroid hitting yeah, like the a moon. moon. <laughs> crater. Yeah. No, As in, eh, might be my New England accent. You know the creator, the what? They're just the creator. Very similar sound. Creator. So <laughs> once I get in my car and head over to get a beer. Anyways, um, yeah. So those are some movies to watch out. There's another um, series on Netflix that I've been meaning to check out, which is called Bodies, which has some dystopian future type of thing. Bodies this year. is. Utterly fantastic, and it takes place in four separate timelines. One of those timelines is, in fact, very cyberpunk uh, as far as, like, the the setting. The story itself, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, (laughs) Uh, so I'm just going to lay down the basic premise. In four separate timelines, they find a dead the exact same dead body in the exact same place. Okay. Um, And it's a mystery that takes place over these four separate timelines that are completely, they're, they're, they're interconnected and it's absolutely fantastic. Like you should watch it. Um, I've had on my list. I haven't gotten to it binge the whole thing in one sitting like it was it was it was fantastic cool i will check it um, out but overall like it's it's not very it's not cyberpunk uh but it's it's definitely worth watching all right cool 
Um, so I think what we're going to talk about for the rest of the show is Phantom Liberty. Um, yeah. Because we we haven't done technically a review of it, um, mainly because you had issues <laughs> with your saves being corrupted. Um, plus, they uh, did a, a, a very big patch uh, yesterday, which broke all my they mods. Did. But that's fine. Um, the stuff they did Fixed add was most great. Most of the problem yes. that Phantom Liberty created, uh, which none of the problems were like game breaking at all, but they were kind of annoying. Uh, like none of the crafted iconic weapons were showing up on people's uh, weapon wall in their apartment, and they fixed that. Yep. Um, some of the quests weren't. You weren't able to complete them. Um, but even then, they were mostly like side quest stuff. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Um, and it appears that all that's been fixed. So It has. So the main features, the, the new and improved features, um, to me, it seemed like it, they were been inspired by various mods for the PC. Um, so you have the Metro system, which was a mod that came out year or two ago um it's not as complex as what cdpr did and again most most of these features i think took inspiration from these mods they did not necessarily take the mod it's not a direct yeah action. um just because i've been playing with some of these mods uh or some of the mods that people are saying these are based off of so the end cart uh i've traveled one complete route um supposedly there's little things that happen during it uh which i have yet to be able to um capture yet which i think is just um constantly running the rails and eventually events might be get triggered from it so oh i haven't noticed any of that i i i've done two complete circuits uh just enjoying the rides yeah. there have been some conversations that were interesting but uh yeah. nothing Nothing special happened. So that's something to look forward to. Yeah, there was one instance, and I didn't fully play it through, was the person I was sitting next to. Every time I looked at, or if I kept my eyes on them, um, eventually they were like, what are you looking at? You better turn around. And I didn't like escalate it to get a full reaction <laughs> from that person to see if, that you is. know there there would have been violence interrupted or the person would have just gotten up and left i don't know um so i think there you got to do a couple playthroughs to kind of eventually see what kind of happens because i think there's just a, a random mechanism in them i would have loved to have been able to move around in that in the end cart and, that's that i think it is. i would have i would have really liked to just be able to walk around the car yeah and get off and on um, instead of just doing the whole switch over. <clears throat> but I think because of the animation, they kind of try to push, you know, they, they, they wanted to control the environment a lot more with that. Um, the other thing is the, uh, can I come to your house tonight? Or I think it's the, the love interest hangout slash dates, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. So there's been a couple mods out there that kind of do something similar in which it extended the romances. Uh, they are different. So um, one of the mods basically was called a, a romance enhancement. I think that was what it's called, which basically uh, had your your romance basically walk around their place to go to different areas and do different things during the day. For example, at dinner time they would eat in the morning, they'd take a shower at night, they'd be sleeping. So when you went over to their place, they weren't, you know, stuck in that one area. Um, which oftentimes is what happened at the ends, right? They're always in that one place. Yeah. And, and you could hug and kiss them. Um, but other than that, that's, all they all that mod really did 
the other mod was can I stay at your place or can I stay at your house tonight or stay at your house um, that mod which the uh, this quest kind of uses the name for that mod would allow would have the your romance call you up and say hey can I come to your apartment and they would do similar to the the romance enhancement they would like be in different areas in your apartment you could go in talk to them um, get a hug get a kiss etc there's a little more functionality from what CDPR put in but there's also I don't know it, it, they're, they're a little different right um, so that was interesting um, and again I still haven't played fully uh, whether or not they integrated the other romance mods which were basically additional text messages you would get after you rom romance them um, and how that interacts <clears throat> the, the third feature was radio <laughs> radio without have to being in the car which yeah is, which just, uh, was another mod that you know, they created and this mod is one thing I, I really really liked and really glad they inserted um, just because see I'm I'm the opposite I actually wish I could just turn it off permanently well, you can turn it off. I just wanted to hear the, you know, the various songs and and the radio chatter because I wasn't always in a car, right? So I was off, often walking and doing stuff and just not hearing, like for example, like uh, um, Moro Rock, right? With with Mike Maximum Mike being the DJ. I haven't heard Mike's bits since phantom liberty started like i hope they fixed that i haven't paid I much attention to the radio uh i could swear that with I, this new I heard him. latest update but i think he's still there um, i think it's because it's random right maybe i mean i was only ever hearing the same four songs regardless of <laughs> uh, on, on various stations, I never want to hear the song "Black Dog" again. I I hate that freaking song. Not um, pon shit. I love pon pon shit. Um, pon shit. I love that song. I love the new music from Phantom Liberty. Yeah. Uh, the Lizzy Wizzy slash Grime song uh, "Delicate Weapons" is fan fucking tastic. And uh, them adding I Want to Stay at Your House from Edge Runners is also, like, those, those two songs are gorgeous. Well, they also um, added a, a, quite a few songs from uh, Edge Runners. Um, I can't remember the name yeah. of the song, but the, the one that, that starts the whole series with David. It's like, I have my bank uh, account they, zero, 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 zero. Uh, I, I was very pleased with Phantom Liberty because they added, uh, oh, what's the name of the Royal Blue Radio, mm -hmm. um, which plays Miles Davis. Okay. Uh, particularly from Bitches Brew. I'm, I'm super happy about that because, uh. I don't like screamy metal. I just don't. I, I never have. I never will. Um, but that's I love Cyberpunk, jazz, man. and you know what? Uh, I honestly think jazz is more cyberpunk than screamy metal. That's nah. that's my opinion. Industrial man, turning no, man, turning no, man into machine. Uh, no, I gotta go with jazz. <sighs> um, Each their own. True enough. Uh, there have been other smaller updates. There have been some new vehicles added. Yep. Uh, or a ton of new vehicles added with Phantom Liberty. And then with this last update, they added uh, <coughs> some new motorcycles and another Porsche. Yep. Um, I don't know why we need two Porsches in the game. I, there, were, there are other cars I would have rather seen, but I'm glad to have it. Um. They so overall, this update. Go ahead. 
like we said, it, it fixed a bunch of the stuff. Uh, now everything shows up on your weapon wall. Um, there are new vendors that you can interact with uh, all around the city, like that were previously just decorative. They were just kind of there. Now you can interact with them, buy stuff from them, talk to them. Yeah, and um, I, I think those vendors add flair, but I also they don't add value <laughs> if 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 that's a thing, right? Because sure, you can buy food from them, um, right? But I mean, it just makes the world feel more alive. True. Overall. So, so there's actually and, uh, a, a mod called S survivability, which inputs a three different bars. Uh, your hydration, your energy, and something else. But basically, it, the, this mechanics that this guy uh, made with this mod was basically you have to drink every so often, you have to eat well, every so that, often, uh, and you have to sleep. You have to sleep. And <laughs> yeah. Drink. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, which it would be that would be a fun implementation. I don't know if I would necessarily want it all the time but i mean fallout did something similar and uh yeah it, it just adds immersion it adds a feeling of uh that you're there that you're living in this city in this environment and you have to survive in it which seeing as how that's the one true theme of the game is trying to survive yeah uh yeah that would that would be a nice thing for them to implement, at least as a as an optional mechanic. Yeah. Like don't tie it into the difficulty, but allow us to toggle well, it on and off. Exactly, and that would be part of the the UI, right? Um, yeah, and I, I I installed that mod, but for whatever reason, I don't know if it was a conflict with another mod I had installed, but one of my bars would never go up. <laughs> So, like, my energy yeah, was is... constantly going down, and it's like, oh, you, you know, you, you need to do this. You need to do this. I, I just did that. Why aren't you <laughs> Why aren't you going up? That Come on, please. One, I don't want to die. point of jealousy I have with, uh, with PC gamers as opposed to my PlayStation is uh, the mods. I, yeah. I want to be able to add mods to my games so freaking bad. It yeah. hurts sometimes. And, and I've only done it recently just because I want – to experience you know this kind of weirdness um the other thing that phantom liberty got which i'm really loving especially now with the replayability of the car races is weapons on cars um and actually yeah, you can vehicle you can get combat. full shootout uh cars will chase you um phantom liberty added the whole uh car theft mechanic uh where you uh, steal cars for El Capitan, and uh, you get rewarded really well for it. You can spam it. Just like uh, when you go into Dogtown, supply crates drop. You can spam that, and it's like the two of them together are the best uh, reward system in the game because um, they always drop at least one, you know, gold legendary weapon yep and it gives or, some replayability to the game too yeah it gives tons of it um it lets you like spend some money and make it back uh plus they're just it's just fun for the supply crates you usually have to kill a bunch of gonks guarding it um half the time you're delivering the cars you've got to like you're getting chased down the whole time it's it's just fun yeah. and it, it <clears throat> like you said it adds a new level of replayability to it even after you've beaten the game and done everything else you can uh you can still you know rock out on that on that the one um, and a lot of okay a lot of the uh there are like three different spots in in the phantom liberty dogtown zone that originally you go in because they have iconic weapons and it's part of like separate mini quests 
but those areas refill with the goons and some of the gear restocks like none of the none of the iconic stuff but you're still getting legendary stuff out of it yep uh so you can just go in and they're all fairly like difficult encounters um so it's good fun that way you can just keep killing those fuckers and unlike like the organized crime areas uh they respawn yeah the one feature that they kind of like kind of i don't know touting it which i i've yet to fully use it so maybe there's some secret thing tied with it but the sightseeing binoculars freaking give me a flashlight or night vision don't give me freaking yeah. binoc don't scenic binoculars. binoculars all right i mean for god's sake my eyes already zoom exactly what do i need binoculars for? so i i don't know if it's in there to there's some secret thing that you can do with them i, I don't know right that you can spy on in on something that you, you might not be aware of or i don't know what what why they they thought this was a great idea to to flout i mean i i know there are binoculars set up around the city uh kind of like in gta uh, like sightseeing like like tourist sites they'll have the binoculars where you get to look at the views is that what they're talking about are those finally usable cuz yeah. that's yeah like in the sightseeing uh, area cuz i was looking I, I've been looking through my inventory and like there's no binoculars nope. in here. No, it's it's they're uh -huh. they're tied to a location. Like I said, yeah, that's that really seems fairly pointless to me. So, and, and, I mean, it's a nice touch, and it would have been fine if it would have, had been included in the original game, because I can't imagine that it really takes all that much to implement something like that. I, I, uh, but for it to be added this late just seems like why uh they might have had some work for an intern i don't know <laughs> i mean that's the only thing i can think of is like okay you, you do that but i can't have night vision or, or flashlight you, you i can't purchase craft materials anymore i can't take mods off of my weapons i hate and not I being able to take mods off the weapon and i can't Jesus add Christ. on top of it overwrite mods that are on the weapon so that weapon yeah, becomes you find a, garbage with, you or know, just fucking like the exact gun you want. And then you look down and it's either got like a, a green mod on it or it, worst of all, it's got the non-lethal mod on it. Like, why the fuck would I want that? Yep. Why the fuck are these gang members using <coughs> this to shoot at me? And why does it still kill me? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, this weapon no longer does uh, lethal damage. Okay, then why is it killing me? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know what they were thinking with that. Even worse than all that, uh, you can't... You can still craft weapons, and in fact, you can craft more weapons now than before. But you can't... You can only craft them to a certain level, and you can't upgrade them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, you can craft a legendary weapon, but you can't upgrade it to, like, plus two. Yep. Or two plus, whatever. Uh, so, really, the only thing worth upgrading, the only thing you can upgrade, are the Iconics. Yeah. Which just leaves you wondering, well, what the fuck is the point? Yeah. Um... Why am I able to craft all these weapons and I can't even craft them to, you know, maximum uh, potential or upgrade them to that, which sucks because some of the weapons are much harder to find than the others. Yep. But eventually, you know, they all drop. Uh, but if you're like me and want, you know, at least one copy of each weapon at its at its best. Uh, suddenly, that becomes much more difficult and time consuming. Yeah, I mean, that kind of was a, a bit of a fail. And and again, this is their final update to the game. 
Um, it's now all going to be all hands on to the next version of the game with Unreal Engine. They say that, but <clears throat> I mean, the truth is, is at some point they're going to find, just like any update, they're going to find bugs that this one created. Well, and th they'll have. Right, so so they're doing bug fixes. They're not doing any new feature updates, right? Yeah, we're not going to get any more content, most likely. Right. <clears throat> so that is saddening, but it's also good. <laughs> um, they actually. I mean, uh, I guess if you, if you if you like Witcher, it's good. Um, I would personally just prefer more cyberpunk, but that's me. Well, keep in mind, right? So, so if you've listened to any of their earning calls um, and their quarterly reports, so CDPR is in, currently in the process of opening a, a new office in Boston, Massachusetts. Oh yeah, uh -huh. USA. So the plan with CDPR, <coughs> right, is, and I forget, I think it's going to be the Warsaw office is going to be strictly for Witcher development in that property and Boston is going to be for cyberpunk development exclusively. So even though Witcher is now, I think this quarter they, they've ramped up the developers for Witcher. So <clears throat> Witcher is the, the next version is being worked on diligently, uh, going forward with, with the developers they do have. But once they get Boston's yeah. office up and running, that is going to be working on the new cyberpunk and they are currently in the not development phase the um what, what do they call it design phase of the new yeah pre, cyberpunk yeah pre-development so they're coming up with uh, the strategy what it's going to be how many years in the future are they going to do um coming up with a story don't know how much um Altosaurians involved with that and again we're never going to find out because they're they're going to be tight lipped <laughs> on that whole situation yeah at least until you know they actually start promoting the game pre-release yep so uh, I think we're probably going to get uh, the next cyberpunk game I'm estimating in 28 maybe 27 yeah, um, I mean, it, it shouldn't take as long because they're moving to the Unreal Engine, which means they don't have to mess with... I mean, the reason... One of the reasons this uh, 2077 took so long is because they were basically building a new engine from scratch. Yep. Uh, and it just wasn't able to do all the things they wanted to do, where we know what Unreal can do. We've yeah. seen all the games that are based on that build. Um, and that'll take a lot of, a lot of the stress off the developers. Yep. So, um, also with this patch, have you done any of the boss fights like with the Adam Smasher yet? I have not. I've yeah. been saving that up. Uh, I need, I actually have a, like two characters who are ready to go do it. I was just, I've been running around on a much earlier save with my, my with a Netrunner character. Yep. Uh, just because she was what I was playing before the update. And I'm, I'm playing, uh, I'm just enjoying the new update for what it is at the moment. But yeah, I, I, I've heard how much better the boss fights are. Uh, I know Adam Smasher now has his own unique Sandivistan. Yep. Um, that apparently looks amazing. I haven't seen it, but I, I've heard quite a bit. I'll forge you the, the link in which they do some of the gameplay. So there was a recent... Inter well, you should actually... Uh, you, maybe you don't have... Uh, I kind of forgot that you're, <laughs> you're doing your... So during Red Stream, they actually displayed quite a bit of the footage around um, Adam Smatcher uh, fight. So supposedly he's... A lot more beefy because they were tired of people uh, one-shotting them with uh, Sir John, Sir John Phyllis, Felicio, what well, I don't know. Staff. Yeah. Staff, yeah. The dildo. <laughs> and some of the developers um, were hurt <laughs> by how easy Smasher was being defeated by the dildo. 
I mean, here's the thing. He's yeah. It's a video game. It's never everybody's all like, "Well, he's so easy to beat. He's nothing like the anime or how they portray him in the Cyberpunk books." Well, that's because it's a video game. Video <laughs> games have their own mechanics, and by the time you get there, you're as strong as you can possibly be. Everything's going to be easy at that point. Well, in 2020, I mean, he was not he was not unbeatable if you played him dumb. No. Um, I mean, I wouldn't play him dumb. I know. But, uh... Well, he has an intelligence of, like, he's, two or three in, he's a, in the books. He's a full conversion cyborg. Um, and that should never be easy. Yeah. But, like, it's gotta work within the constraints of a video game, and you don't want to feel like a total bitch when you're playing it. So, he's gotta be beatable. And by the time you get to him... Uh, especially if you go off and do all the side stuff first and uh, really beef up and max out your character. Well, it's a video game. That's He's going to be easy by the end. That's that's the way it works in every video game. It's uh, It always struck me as kind of a weird argument. Like, if, you, if, you, if you're not max level and you go in there and try and take out Adam Smasher, he mops the floor with you. I know that because I did it on yeah. my first run. I was like level 40 and he just trounced me <clears throat> yeah um and i think that's true with a lot of boss fights you you need you need to have a certain level uh to get i would them. much rather i actually appreciate the fact that fighting smasher is a pretty stand-up fight it's not a bunch of it's not your typical boss fight pixel bitching nonsense where oh well you gotta shoot the chandelier and Drop that on him. Then you've got to shoot his toe. And, like, I hate that shit. Uh, it's pretty much just a straight-up fight. It's much better than, say, the fight at, like, running from the robot at the end of Phantom Liberty, which was fun, don't get me wrong. But I hated the fact that I couldn't just fight. Yeah, well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that robot. Holy Christ. Yeah, the, that thing killed robot, me though. so many times because I'm like, oh, I see it. Oh. I just open up on it like, you're going to die. And, of course, it kills me immediately. I'm like, yeah. how am I supposed you to kill this anything. thing? It's like, oh, no, you're not supposed to kill it. You're supposed to avoid it. Yeah. Like, oh. You just have to run, which, I mean, like I said, don't get me wrong. It's a fun mechanic. But the idea that you can't fight it is always going to bug me. Yeah. Uh, especially since, you know, I, I can go take out Adam Smasher, but I can't deal oh. with this fucking robot. You can take out the, the Chimera, <laughs> but you can't defeat this little bot. I yeah, can... the, the giant spider tank straight out of Ghost in the Shell, you can fight and take out. Like, you have to run from it at first, but eventually, yeah, just fight it. Yeah. Um, so have you tried yeah, any of the... I'm not uh... a fan of... Bitching boss fights. The tricks on the motorcycles yet? Dude, I that is probably of all the things that got added in the new update, that is probably my absolute favorite is that now you can do wheelies on motorcycles, you can lean back and forth, you can do tricks, and yeah, it is so satisfying. I'm actually doing that right now as we speak i have yet um, to do try to perform any tricks i've tried to do wheelies and i suppose with real life they're it's kind of the same like <laughs> i as soon as i go like i don't know 20 feet my motorcycle is just getting some all bikes over the are place. better than others like you like the kusanagis those aren't what you want to use the, yeah. the wheelbase is too long uh, it looks cool when you take off, but you it's you can't maintain it. No, you can't. Uh, the shorter bikes, like the arches, man, you can do some stunts. I will, I will get off of this call right now and go do some. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of all the things that got added with this last uh, with this last update, that's that's my absolute favorite. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm going to try to get into some spoilers with Phantom Liberty now that yeah. you actually yeah were able we're going to gonna play spoil the... the shit out of things, guys. If if you don't want to be spoiled, uh, 
I'm not going to tell you to go listen to something else. I'm not going to tell you to leave our show. Uh, I'm just going to tell you to suck it up. Yep. You, you guys have had a month. Exactly. Two months. So, um, there's technically we're spoil some stuff right now. four endings to Phantom Liberty that you can possibly take, I guess. Yeah. Um, I have done three out of the four, so I still have the fourth one to take care of. So, my original... Uh, I have done all four. Okay. Um... So you got that achievement? Yeah. I will say that uh, unlike... The way it's structured and the way it's set up is kind of weird. Uh, in that... There's two separate waypoints for deciding which ending you want. Yeah. The main, it actually comes comes around in like the middle of the Phantom Liberty Liberty storyline. Um, you decide at that point which which basic ending you want. Yep. Uh, and then there's another one, depending on the choices you make, that pretty much places you at the same point you are with the regular endings in the game. Yep. Um, yeah, so f my first playthrough, um, I went with Songbird. Um, my first playthrough, I went with Reed. Got it. Yeah, so... Uh, the... All right, for, for those of you who haven't played and are still following us and, and, and care uh, about the video game, the Phantom Liberty update is basically all geared around like an espionage spy uh, spy type storyline uh, where you get recruited to well they ask if you're a bad enough dude and you want to save the president yeah um, and of course you are a bad enough dude otherwise you're not really going anywhere in the game um, oh, and, and so if, if you do and you're you haven't played the game or, or Phantom Liberty yet, and you still want to purchase it. Keep in mind there are sections in there that you gotta set set about an hour's time to play through it. <laughs> Some of these, yeah, like things. like the missions aren't like the the update itself, the Phantom Liberty update. It's gonna cost you about what thirty bucks, forty yep. bucks, something. Well, Ultimate Edition is uh, coming out, is so. I mean, it, it is well worth it. It is a giant chunk of story. Uh, you won't beat it in a day. Um, it's it's well worth the price. Like, there is more than enough there to keep you busy and active and going. Uh, yeah, it's like the main quest from, um, from the base game. Uh, yeah. Some of them yeah. just, you know, you're sitting there like, when is this going to end? I... I got an appointment I got to get to. <laughs> so. Um, and there are new side quests and all sorts of stuff. Like we touched on it earlier. There's all sorts of the, like new, like small gameplay options that just make it worthwhile. Uh, but yeah, the storyline is, is that uh, the president gets in trouble and she is in a new area of town called Dogtown. It's, that area around the stadium uh, in Pacifica, where it was previously closed, previously closed off, now it's open. Um, and the whole game, the whole news, most of the new storyline takes place in there. Uh, and you're presented with the choice of siding between uh, two people uh, on either side of this giant conspiracy that's going on in the game. You can choose. Uh, Reed, who is played by the indomitable uh, Idris Elba. Um, yeah, he's just fantastic. Uh, like some of the, like every bit is his his acting in the game is every bit as good as Keanu Reeves. Uh, like you will, even if you decide you don't like the character, um, you will be extremely impressed by the quality of acting in the game. Um, the other protag or the other uh, key member of this storyline is named Songbird, uh, 
who is a net runner uh and you can choose to side with her and she uh, uh, again is just acted extremely well i don't remember the name of the actress off the top of my head but she does a phenomenal job a phenomenal job and uh it's a really good in-depth story that leaves you with moral quandaries that are impactful to the point that you will be thinking of them long after you finish the game. Yeah. Like it's, it's very in depth. It's very you'll see, just play the game. I highly, uh, we're, we're both highly recommending it. Um, and I just, I wanted to get the basic premise of the game of the update out of the way before we start talking spoilers itself. Uh, so everybody's on the same page. Um, like he said, there are four different distinct endings. Uh, some are more distinct than others. Uh, same as the base game. Um, choices you make. While I'm not going to say they affect the base game, they definitely give context and uh, are referenced. Like the base game is referenced in the DLC, and some of the stuff that happens in the DLC is referenced in the base game. It's they've done it really, really fantastically. Uh, it's a much better integra inter integration of DLC and base game than I've seen really in any other game. Or to be honest. <clears throat> um, as we said earlier, tons of new vehicles, tons of like just ridiculous amounts of new weapons. Uh, there's a vendor who will allow you to purchase weapons that you may have missed. Not yeah. all of them, but most. That was nice. Uh, I think the only weapon... Yeah, it's really nice. Um, like if you missed the cleaver uh, in Placide's butcher shop, you can you can buy that from him. The only thing I've noticed that you... The only thing I've noticed that I haven't been able to buy is Stinger, the, the knife you get from Scorpion's funeral. Uh, that bummed me out. I was really hoping to be able to pick that up. But... Because I missed it on my main quest. I just never got the notification. Anyway. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So so the, the divergency is that you can either side with Songbird. Right? Or side with Reed. So Songbird is looking to escape not only uh, her captives. Her current captive. But also, of get out of uh, being tied to the NUSA. <clears throat> so yeah. So that leads to two possible or the 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 avenue to two endings. So I went with Sogbird. So there's a point in the game in which you kind of betray and help her out to escape um, during the situation with um, Kurt Hansen. Which I was disappointed because I really wanted to kill, kill Kurt, but I'm glad that Alex, Alex did. <laughs> so you escape with her, and you actually get to an area um, with the uh, shuttle taking off. So you actually get to explore that whole area, which I loved. Um, and then, dude, I got... the spaceport is fucking cool. I wish you could explore it more. Uh, I'm actually kind of disappointed that you can't. Um, but just being able to to run around in it during that mission is more than worthwhile. Yep. And then at the conclusion of you getting her or trying to get her off planet, um, you either have a choice of saving her or turning her over to Reed. Um. Which 
is a choice that shows up in pretty much regardless of which major ending you choose, Songbird or Reed. Yeah. That's a theme that continues all the way across. Like you're constantly having to make that choice. And you constantly get new information that makes you second guess yourself. Yeah. Um, so I of course sided with Songbird because I thought, you know, the and in USA was manipulating her, trying to control her, um, and felt, yes, sure, she betrays me at the end, right? So the whole, spoiler, um, she kind of promises you a cure, which she does not deliver. She only has a cure for one person, and that's herself, which is fine. I, I get it. <laughs> so I actually shipped her off, and of course, uh, had to shoot Reed to uh, get her off planet. But that's my first decision I made, um, which I kind of regret. And granted, you know, the good thing was Alex was still alive, and she, luckily Alex did not try to kill me. Um, Reed is the other person you can choose, and Reed is an agent of the NUSA, the uh, NUSA. He is, he is your government spook, and he himself has been betrayed by both songbird and the government in the past so he's he's got his own kind of shady motivations uh and situations that have placed him where he is in the game um nothing in this in this storyline is simple every mission you do uh like i said it's going to leave you second guessing your choices nothing is nothing feels straightforward it is very much a game of uh, moral compromise might be the best way to put it um and if you're playing it with a purely role playing bent like you're not focused on getting whatever gear and specialty items are out there uh I want to say it's much more rewarding uh, as a game. Like, the items are cool, but... Like, the first time you play it, my suggestion is just play through with your gut. Go with whatever your gut first tells you to do and just live with the decisions. Yes. Um, the only disappointment I had with, with the whole game was with the... Uh, AIs from beyond the black wall and it kind of started getting into like a Akira realm of cyberpunk with superpowers which it, it gets a little weird yeah like uh, I, I get what you're saying and I agree with you it it, it feels kind of like cyber generation but I don't know if it's because it's the delusion you're getting of these powers happening that you know an ai is adding some visuals to your to its uh effectiveness right which is basically so the ai is capable of killing people through quick hacking i assume very quickly um and it leaves this residue which i don't know kind <clears> of <throat> again i think someone it, explained it visual effect but it doesn't it, it doesn't translate well to the re, the realistic, gritty feeling that most of the game provides. Yeah. And again, I think uh, just, someone just mentioned a little bit. that, yeah, you're seeing that because it's part because of... Because you yourself are infected. Yeah. yeah. And technically no one else really sees the, the crud that appears. Oh, the other thing I like is um, the cop system. Um, that was introduced. Oh, I love the cop system. <clears throat> they will chase you. They will hunt you down. They will get more and more. Like there's now a wanted system where the cops get more and more aggressive in their response to you. They start out as just basic street cops, and eventually Max Stack, like C SWAT itself, comes down and lays the smack down on you, or tries to anyway. Yeah, and if you're driving around, just give a, a cop car a nice little uh, a bump. Love bump. See how they react. <laughs> they will screw up your world. 
Oh yeah, especially when you're trying to deliver one of those stolen cars, it it becomes a a chore. Yes. Um, so with the endings, um, if you do side with Reed, you are then also given an option to save yourself. Uh, which... Yeah, siding with Reed is, is the option that gives you siding with Reed and deciding to turn in Songbird because again, you can there are there are choices and they are moral quandaries that will leave you in conflict with yourself about which which choice to make but if you if you do side with reed and then if you do make other choices you are given a chance you, you can get cured yeah like he was saying and the cure comes at a price but for me the the cure right so you get cured basically to spoil it all you can no longer have cyberware which is fine but, you know, not having cyberware, the ending kind of shows you after the fact, and you're getting the shit kicked out of you by low-level street punks who it's you're promoted it's as, like, you're V, like, you are a killer. Oh, shit, I don't want to be near you. Um, so you have a reputation. And I guess in two years, that reputation goes away. <laughs> yeah, after slaughtering numbers of people that, you know, would be the equal of any small nation, you and are suddenly kind of a helpless babe in the woods <laughs> who every... still tries to talk to them, but cannot walk that walk any longer. But you're also, are on, you used to be on speed dial with every single fixer in the, in the city. Right? We have a problem. Who are we going to call? Well, we're going to call V because she gets shit done. To have that reputation, like, just be like, oh, well, it's been two years. Nobody knows who you are. I mean, people complain about that, but honestly, that shit makes sense. Uh, I know after two years, like, all these big events we, you know, follow immediately, we don't even remember them. Mm -mm. just our, as a as a society our attention span is so small now that yeah. you know you remember planking how huge that was a, yeah. a couple of years ago and now like nobody talks about that shit nobody remembers it um, true very true well yeah everyone remembers you know some other NPCs pretty vividly. So, I don't know. Yeah, and again, the whole, that, that whole mechanic of, like, yeah, that, what people know. Are you talking about that underground rocker that yeah. nobody would ever heard of that suddenly... Yeah, mean That somehow, <laughs> even though he's this massively underground, like, completely obscure artist, there are, like, vinyl albums of his just everywhere on the street, just in the trash. One out of five people uh, you walk by has his T-shirt on. Okay. Yeah, that obscure guy. Never heard of him. The 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 obscure guy that you know, Set fifty off. years later, still has more songs on the radio than any other artist. You know, the obscure guy who set a nuclear bomb off in the middle of the city. Uh, yeah, that that obscure guy. Never heard of him. Um, never heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> it's I get in so many arguments uh, and I use the term argument loosely because I try not to ever actually get involved in a real argument online it's just pointless but uh, I do have to school people who are just so adamant about and want to take Johnny Silverhand at his word that they were that he was just this underground guy and I'm like dude they were they were he was the number one selling band in the world they sold out stadiums yep like, they sold out Wembley. Yep. Or that Samurai wasn't a thing during the Fourth Corporation War. Nor was Samurai a thing when Alt got kidnapped. Well, uh... Yeah, no, they were long... No, they broke up before 2013. Yeah. I was, I was thinking, like, oh, uh, that was in 2013. I don't... Now I remember, oh, yeah, that's no, in Rocker Boy. On his own. 
Yeah, Rocker Boys. Yeah, like, he did not come out of a, a, a samurai concert and get and all get kidnapped. They had split up well before that. Yeah. And of uh, course, everyone's like, "No, you got to take his word for it." I'm like, "No." <laughs> like, no, Everybody. he lies about absolutely everything, and everything that comes out of his mouth is designed to further his own interests. He is a manipulator, and everything he says is him trying to manipulate you or somebody else. Yep. To the point that he does it and doesn't even realize he's doing it anymore. Like, anytime you see him say anything and believe he's being sincere about it, he's, even then, he's trying to manipulate <clears throat> you. Yeah, and I've been watching a lot of the, the different lore uh, videos from various creators. I don't know. It, some of them don't do any research. Um, some of them do. At there, all. There is uh, a good one that I kind of follow, but again, he even gets things wrong. Um, but he, he does go to, to <coughs> tabletop references from tabletops. Um, and, you know, does the actual research. But he also adds in his own interpretation and claims it as fact which sure i guess you know you are a creator you get to create <laughs> but it's also a little confusing like i remember there there was someone in the comments wanted him oh you gotta do uh Waylon boa boa and it's like it's gonna be a very short video very <laughs> short video <laughs> Very, very short. He he appears in two source books. That's it. Yeah. And they also wanted to, to have uh, a video for each of the top ten solos from Solo Fortune. I'm like, okay, he, he, good luck on that. That's something that I think we should have um, get one of, I think it was, a, it was one of the guys on and who worked on uh, Solo Fortune and find out... What is that list made out of? Yeah, sure, we got Morgan and Waylon and, and the uh, California Executioner, but what about these other people? Where the hell did they come from, and why are they on the top they ten? Well, I don't for the book. Well, I don't know if it was like you know they took a, a survey of all the authors and said, "Hey, do you guys have any solos?" And they might have like, "Oh, this is my character, or this is one of my friend's character who is an awesome solo." And talk to them and find out. Hey, where, where did where did some of this come from, right? Because you know everyone thought. Yeah, oh, definitely Adam... some weird choices for you know the top ten list. Yeah, and it's like you know with um, Adam Smasher, everyone assumed he was a character from Mike, and technically no, he wasn't. He was just a, a throwaway persona that you know Benjamin created. Um, which some people have referenced in, in a, a Smasher Lord video in which they said, oh, this was one of Mike's characters. And it's like, eh, no, he wasn't. <laughs> he was not. Um, or even He was like, somebody else's character that Mike absconded with. Yeah. And they even now, did granted, that. it was all from the same editorial pool, but yep. yeah, he is not the creator. They also said the same thing about uh, Raish. But then again... Raish might have been an NPC. Uh, it's, we'd love to have Mike on to, to clarify. <laughs> but Mike also likes to uh, yeah. keep suspense. So he might not. He might be like Johnny and be an un unreliable uh, commenter. Um, just because <laughs> I, he has a very sheepish way of saying things that you're like, eh, I don't know if I trust what you're saying. Um, but yeah, race was well, just, uh, I mean, he's like, he's like all of us. He, he finds a concept in the books he thinks is cool and he runs with it yeah. and that's, or he lets other people run with it. Uh, once that's, I mean, that's the nature of the RPG business. Mm -hmm. Um, once you create a character who's popular enough that he has some longevity, he becomes the property of anybody who's working for that company. Yeah, and, and the other thing is there was w w the guy that I like who actually does the research. Um, he said something in the beginning of the video. Basically, he was um, doing a, a lore video on 
uh, the pack rim, right? So he was using the pack rim source book as well as, you know, what happened in red and then what any information that 2077 expanded upon. And of course he was like, you know, oh, this, this was from, you know, United States authors or American authors at the time of pack rim. I'm like, I had to put in the comment. I'm like, no, they, they was, those people were actually from, you know, the Asia region. They, they are not American yeah, I mean, writers. Look at the credit. Well, apparently he looked at it and said, oh, these are Americans because it was American publisher. And I basically said all of the region books were written by authors from those regions. They were not. It's the truth. <laughs> Again, um, one of those things that, you know, sure, you, you do a little bit of research. You get to a point. But to make that leap of saying, well, this is fact, especially putting it on a video. Because especially nowadays with, you know, cultural appropriation and other accusations that can, you know. Well, I mean, I, I made my control. opinion about most of these lore videos, content creators in the past. Uh, like, my opinion is known. Most of them don't do any real research. They just read straight from the book with no context, no greater understanding of what's happening. Um, and yeah, like you said, there are a couple of guys out there who, who do know what they're talking about and they have played the game and they do have context and understanding, but like when the game first came out, there were all these lore videos coming out and it just, it was painful to watch some of them. Yeah. Well, and we're talking like the bigger names too. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to name any names, uh, but they know who they are. <laughs> They know who they are. Um, yeah, it just got really frustrating. Well, because they were all getting invited to like E three and whatnot, and like they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Well, right. So again, it's a gold. It's a, a gold rush. You know. Oh, if I can put this out yeah. there and make you know make my mark, I'm going to be considered you know the person to go to, which. It's a shame. <laughs> why? Why aren't we putting out lore videos? Damn it! Um, because anything we put a lore video out on would be like four hours long. Yeah, true. <laughs> As we con constantly and uh, we don't have the production values that, that they have. Like, yeah, well. I will say it about some of them. Like some of their production values, even if they didn't know what they were talking about, were pretty amazing. Like, yes. they were putting that together some some pretty darn. Some pretty darn good videos. Yes, it, re it requires... Four special effects and all that. And it also requires a script to be written and versus us who just like to ramble. <laughs> yeah. Like, we don't have... We never have any kind of script. We've got a basic outline when we interview people of questions we like to ask. And we've got a basic idea on shows like this of where we want to go, but... Yeah. Like anybody who's still listening to us, we started out with a review of Phantom Liberty and now we're just rambling. Well, no, we started out with uh, a year end uh, review. <laughs> year end review. Yeah. Which turned into a Phantom Liberty review, which then turned it into, you know, commentary <clears throat> of the state of the game, as it were. State of the game. But yes, this, this year was pretty good for Cyberpunk, I think, overall. Um, now that we looping all the way back to our original topic, um, yeah, it's been we got, a great year for Cyberpunk. Yeah, we got three printed products. Um, kudos on Altar Sorian. I'm looking for, forward to more. I'm sure the new interface is, is going to be coming out within uh, the first quarter. Um, also, during PAX Unplugged, I think, or PAX East, I think it was PAX Unplugged. They revealed a um, starter kit for the Edrunner mission kit. Um, yep, they were giving out pamphlets. Yeah, and they had and the, no, unless you the were there, dice. you cannot get an actual physical copy. Yeah, from our tell story, and I've already reached out. Um, <laughs> I'm very sad, but they are going to be making it free online, so which the, is nice. So you'll still get a chance to look at the pamphlet, but man, I wanted a physical copy of that. 
There needs to be a mailing list or something that we can sign up for to get like the convention swag. Well, we got to work on on hanging out with Dice more. Get him on. Uh, I, that's who call. I reached out to was Dice. <laughs> he couldn't smuggle one for you. He couldn't smuggle one Damn. for me. He said the demand was too great, and there's just no way to fulfill it. Yeah, but it's us. Uh, but he was he <laughs> was friendly about it. Um. But yeah, we definitely either that or we need to make friends with somebody who gets to go to this stuff and can snag us the swag because I love swag. Well, the problem with that is they might only get one copy, and I know if they can I... put on a disguise and go back and fake mustache. <laughs> Good day to you, sir. I'm here to uh, collect this. I mean, we're cyberpunk players. We li- we live for the heist. So, yeah, there you go. I mean, in the back of my head, I'm still like mentally planning on how to get on on, on some way to acquire that giant banner. I want that. I, want that <laughs> so I don't even know what I can do with it, but I want it. Just goes. just because I know it exists. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's been a great year. All the all the bugs for Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven got fixed. Well, uh, not all. <laughs> tons and not all, but the vast majority. There's nothing game breaking. Uh, for me, there never was anything game breaking except uh, for, uh, except for your period save <laughs> <laughs> Where broke I your game. Save. Yeah, yeah, that was that that did break the game, but they fixed that very quickly. Um. Yeah, that was a shocker yeah. to have how quick they um, they put out that patch. I think that was record time. I don't think any other system that basically, hey, this is our last hurrah, would put in that much effort into getting a fix so quick. Well, I mean, when a third of your players can't play it, yeah. it, it, it creates it creates a problem. Eh, start a whole new playthrough. It'll fix that. It, it, but it, yeah. <laughs> Grr. I got to get all the money again. That's not the point. Um, right, so we are actually off until late, the second Wednesday of January. So I hope everyone has a great holiday, however you celebrate uh, end of year stuff. Um, so we will be back on the 17th of January. So we've got a bit of time left or off, uh, relax, recoup, uh, get ready for the next year. Hopefully we can uh, hit up some more wonderful interviews, maybe have some old people or some of our past interviews on again. Um, we are definitely working on trying to get some more people. <coughs> I'm actually going to try to reach out to some of these content creators as well. Um, try to get them involved and tell them what they got wrong and right. <laughs> or just sit and, you know, chat. So, uh, yeah. Bring, I mean, our, our, our focus has always been on the community itself, the yes. game, the franchise, and anything we can do to keep the community alive and appreciated. That's, we're about that. Uh, both the professional on the professional side and the fandom side. Agreed. Um, I, I, I think I think what I'm gonna do next year. I think what we might try and do is get some of the uh, older cyberpunk webmasters uh, to bring in the fandom side of the community and get their takes on things. Um, I'm in contact with quite a few of them, and I think. I think they'd be open to, you know, coming on the show. If you're in contact uh, with Conkle, uh, tell him to get his website back on. <laughs> I, I mean, if we get him on the show, we're gonna we're gonna just constantly pressure him. Right? You know, mockery needs to come back. Yeah, up. mockery needs to come back up too. Agreed. Well, that is it. Yeah. Um. Along with, of course, you know, uh, we're. Still reaching out and trying to get a hold of professionals. Yep. Uh, as we said earlier, uh, David Ackerman has has been on our list. We're, it's just a been a timing issue. Um, I'd very much like to reach out to Doug Anderson if I can find him. Um, 
And like Smiley said, we love to have some of our previous guests come back on. Yep. Uh, ideally, I I'd like to get a lot of these old professionals uh, on at the same time um, as like a reunion of some sorts, like ideally. Yep. We'll, we'll try and work on that. Yeah, most um, definitely. But yeah, this is our this is our season finale. Uh, we will be back in January. Uh, is it, are we coming back in January or February? January, seventeenth. Well, there you go. Um, that gives us plenty of time to enjoy the holidays or ignore them, as it were, uh, and just just take a breather, uh, refocus our efforts, and hopefully come back with an even better se season next year. Most definitely. All right. Uh, so wrapping up. I am CyberSmiley. Uh, I run a site called CyberSmiley.net uh, where there's a bunch of uh, various utilities for Cyberpunk 2020 as well as Cyberpunk Red. Um, I haven't updated it at all. <laughs> God, I, I don't even know if I touched it this year. I really got to get some bug fixes done and get off my ass and, and get to it. Um, but yeah, so so... I gotta get into it. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, um, which of course I have a Discord channel for, or Discord server for that. Uh, so I'm in tons of Discords as well as Cyber Nations Uncensored Discord, which we do have a channel for Forlorn uh, Dopes, which you can always communicate through that to get to me. Um, but I also am on almost every Cyberpunk ser server that I f I think. And there's quite a few. I think I have a list of like 12 different Discord servers. Yeah, there's on. a bunch of them. Yeah. Um, not only for the TTRPG, but also for uh, Cyberpunk 2077. There's quite a few of those. Uh, also, I'm on Reddit. Uh, I'm bouncing between, again, most of the, the Reddits for Cyberpunk. Um, so I occasionally uh, read the articles there, post there. Um, I'm not in any of the other social medias because they're just too toxic for me. Um, or or maybe I'm a Luddite. I don't know. Anyways, that's me. All right. I am, I am Wisdom000, uh, otherwise known as Derek Bernier. I run Data Fortress 2020, the largest, most comprehensive Cyberpunk 2020 site on the net. Uh, I am on the same discords he's on, although I, I am much less active there. Uh, I also follow the notable cyberpunk 2020 red and 2077 reddits. Uh, I'm on Facebook, uh, both personally, as well as on the, uh, cyber nation uncensored cyberpunk 2020 and data fortress 2020 groups. Um, I'm not on Twitter or any of the other social media platforms, but, uh, yeah, you can all <coughs> reach us directly at the, uh, at smiley's, uh, cyber smiley, uh, discord group or through our various sites and email us message us, whatever. If you have comments, questions, complaints, or suggestions, uh, we love to hear from you. Um, we'd like to thank Rob Mulligan for hosting us at Cybernation Uncensored. Here, here, uh, Rob. We'd like to thank you. Absolutely. Uh, we'd like to thank you, the audience, for joining us and and sticking with us. Um, yeah. Uh, by all means, get a hold of us uh, with anything, even if it's just to say hi. We love talking about Cyberpunk 2020, obviously. Yep. And, and it's, it's various, just the genre in general and its various franchise incarnations. Um, and if anyone has any topics yeah. they'd like to hear our opinion on, which I'd be very surprised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, drop us a line, man. Yeah, please reach out. Uh Again, this was our season finale. We will join you on January 17th uh, with our next episode. Uh, we hope you all have a wonderful holiday season. 
And uh, happy New Year's. Happy New Year's and all that. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Yes, thank you. Till next year. Adios.